Welcome back. I told you I'd be talking about this. I told you it was coming. Two Worlds 2 was released for multiple consoles for the PlayStation 3, the Xbox 360, and most primarily for the personal computer system. Now, I did a little bit of research the other day to see what I could talk about outside of what I wanted to do my rant files about. Because there is some infamous history surrounding this game, and apparently they've been releasing recent downloadable content expansion packs for both the single and multiplayer um, experiences. The first one that I know about is this Pirates expansion pack that takes you to a new map different from the main map. And I actually took a screenshot here to show you the map of this game world. The map of the game world is this. This is the main map that you would play if you were just to play vanilla Two Worlds 2. And no downloadable content, no extra stuff. This looks like a pretty massive map. There's a big continent here, there's some islands, there's a nice sizable chunk of islands here, there's a big island down here, and you might think that's fairly nice. How are you going to get there? Is it fast travel? You might have a boat. And yes, you do have a boat. You can take a boat, go to places. We'll talk about that in a moment. We'll talk about that in a moment. Well, the Pirates DLC does not take you here. It, you don't go here for the Pirates DLC. Um, for the Pirates DLC, you have a brand new map. I don't have a screenshot of that to show you, but it's different from this place. I don't know how big it is. It's probably about as big as this place right here called Aeolas. It's probably about as big as that little area right there. The second big DLC was multiplayer maps. They released multiple maps for the multiplayer, which sounds nice in theory on paper, but ultimately it's a false part because I don't believe this DLC was released for the console versions. I could be wrong. I'd have to look on the PlayStation Network to see if this received any downloadable content, it's just highly unlikely. I believe that all of the downloadable content released, especially the new content, would be released for the PC version of this game. Which I honestly think that was the version they intended to make this game mostly for, was the PC version. The PlayStation 3, and especially the Xbox 360 versions, both seem to have been afterthoughts. They seem to have been afterthoughts. I'm going to be turning this light off, it's right in my face. You're not... you're used to the dark anyways, aren't you? I am. So, the third DLC, which was recently released, was released sometime in... Excuse me, I'm going to move this. Move, 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 move. Fine. There we go, perfect. I just need to get this out of here. I don't want that in the way. Alright. The third DLC was actually released sometime in 2019, which is incredible because this is like some sort of 2011, 2012 game. It's pretty old. They didn't, I don't believe they released this for the PS4. Um. I mean, at least the Wikipedia article at least doesn't say it's on the PS4. There might be like some sort of deluxe version or digital download version of this that released for the PlayStation 4 that you could play because I hear people talking about, oh, we can multiply on the PlayStation 4, we can do that. So I think they could do that if, they, if, if, if it's on there. If it's not, then it's just PS3, 360, and the PC, as I was told. Which could be an error. The problem with the DLC is that 
it's DLC, it's not in the main game. So, even if you might say, oh, we got all the DLC, and it's actually a really good game once you get all the DLC, that does not save the game. That does not save the game. For example, I could pull out... Where, where did where did, where did it go? Where did it go? Where, where did it go? Here it is. Here, here it is. For example, I could pull out this game, Fallout 3. The DLC does not save Fallout 3. If I were to purchase the base version of Fallout 3, and it was pure garbage, and that the only reason that Fallout 3 is playable is if you got the Game of the Year version with the DLC, if, if that DLC was the only reason that made Fallout 3 playable, then that would mean that Fallout 3 wasn't a good game. It was good DLC, but it wasn't a good game. Yeah, clearly, it was good enough to receive a Game of the Year edition with all of the DLC included, which was amazing, because that turned a okay game into a good game, because of all the DLC that you could do and all the fun that you could have with that. Two Worlds 2, by comparison, is not a good game by itself. It is a game that has the potential to be a good game. It has the potential to be an amazing game. Because if you are an RPG player who enjoys open world maps, and you just enjoy just getting lost in the, the world that you find yourself in, doing a bunch of side quests, dozens upon dozens of side quests, in like the lure of, say, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, in the lure of sea, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, there's like 200 side quests in this game. 200 side quests, about 60 faction quests, maybe 80 faction quests, two huge expansions, another faction expansion that you could add as well that gives you some extra quests. There's a crap ton of stuff you could do in this game. The main story quests might not be that interesting, but it is a massive world to get lost in. Two Worlds 2 has the right idea. There is a lot of side quests to get lost in doing. The issue is that it gives you the illusion that you have a massive map to work with. This big place here, this big massive place, you can't go here. Apparently, I don't know what they did, Maybe to save RAM, I don't I don't know what they did when making this game, but they gave you the full map. Everything is here. But then they decided partway through development that they were going to use this big area as the multiplayer area. You can open a multiplayer game, co-op mode, whatever, and you can go to this massive continent called Icronus. In Icronus you can explore this region, that region, this region, that region, this region, and that region. And there were various game modes that you could do, various maps in Icronus that you could have fun with, basically. And, 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 and it was fine for the multiplayer, but the problem is that this continent is still here in the single-player game. You could actually, if you had the time to spare, the time to waste, rather, to take a boat that you could purchase in this continent, which you start out in, in Erimos. In Erimos, you take a boat, you can sail it to Aeolus, which is where the second half of the game takes place. But you can also take the boat and sail it all the way here to Icronus. Now, you have a boat that's called a sailboat. Now, you can only sail when the wind is strong. And clearly the wind is terrible around here, because you're technically not really supposed to go here. But you can't. You can go here. You could sail your boat all along the coastline. The coastline, you can actually disembark from your boat and walk along everywhere where you see um, sandy beaches. You could disembark and walk along the sandy beaches. And here's the funny, interesting thing that I found through my exploration of this massive continent. Here, in this little, um, I don't know what they call this, a peninsula or something, right around here, you can see where I'm circling, 
in this little big area here, let's try to zoom in. In this little region, right here, there is a village. There, somebody, the devs, made a village that is completely empty. There's nobody here, there's no NPCs, but it looks like a, a nice fishing village. There's a lighthouse right here that you could visit. And there's a road, like a little trade road, that on the map, it's on the map, that, that you can travel all the way up until you see a giant boulder in between two cliff sides. It's like the road goes right up to a boulder, and you can't pass through. Like, it was as if that they, it was as if they originally intended to make this map playable in the single player, but then they re decided, let's not. And all of the stuff that we were part way into making, like this village right here, that we, they didn't expect people, they probably didn't expect people to actually try to come here. So they left the village in, they didn't put any NPCs here, and they put a giant boulder, in case people did come here, they put a giant boulder in between the little archway, passageway, that allowed you it's a good way to show you, show it, right, right here, like that. There's, imagine this is the archway, and this is a path leading to the fishing village right here. There is a bunch of stuff behind here in the areas beyond the archway. They put a massive boulder right in front that you couldn't pass through. And there was another village like that, um, around here, around, uh, here, there was another little area that had a little road leading inwards that you couldn't go to because they put a giant boulder in the way in the single player mode so that you couldn't continue. Now, if you continue along the coast, there's another little big area here that you actually could go through. Um, I believe it was right here. Somewhere around this area, there was another little, another little nook that you could disembark in. And you can go further inland, and there is a piece of ruins that looked kind of elven or something. Really ancient ruins. There were some enemies that you could fight. Basic enemies that only existed on this continent. It was really weird. Uh, there's these fish-type enemies that exist along the coastlines that you could kill for some experience and some drops. Um, and they were on this little, this little ruins here. There's no quest here, but there are little portals fast travel markers here that actually wouldn't activate. They wouldn't activate because they actually weren't here. But they were here, but they weren't here. Like, somebody developed a map here that you could actually go to in the single player, and then they just decided, decided, they just decided let's not. So all of the areas that they pr already made are still here that you could visit, and all of the stuff that they were making further inland, you can't visit because they put a big boulder or something in the way of the path leading further inland. Traveling further along the coast here, you see another little settlement here. There's another little settlement right around here. Now there's a big area further in here in the multiplayer area, but you could actually visit this part in the beach area. There's this little, little tiny little settlement. You can find some fish people here. And then there's a path leading further and then that's blocked, so you can't go anywhere. And then sail around here. There's another little big desert area, the beach desert area that you could further go in with a little blocked pathway that was supposed to lead here. This little big de desert area. Um, it was as if this was one big area that you could visit, and then they decided, let's block off the coastline because it's easier to do that. Now, I tried to find a way to get into the mainland, like, try to, like, run up some hills and try to, um, there's this little hillside right here that's the easiest to try to run up along the forest line to try to get inland, but if I tried to do that, I would just get a random loading screen and it would load me right back at the beach or something. It would not let me travel inland. And the interesting thing is that all of the, the entire map W would render it would render for me and it was brand new biomes that were completely different from this biome here which is more like a tropical island and then this biome here which is more like desert up here you had more of a temperate climate you had like temperate trees new different types of plant life and it was 
very interesting to visit all along the coastline in the areas that I could go to. This little village right here was very interesting to me, though. This little village right here was fully completed. It was a complete village, but they just didn't put any NPCs there. They didn't put, um... They just, they just didn't finish this area. Or technically, they did, but they put it into multiplayer. But they left it into the single-player map. So technically, all you could go to is this desert island here, this jungle island here, this little island here, and this tiny little island way up here. I believe there's fast travel teleports that you could take to go from here to a bunch of places here to a bunch of places here to one place here. And there is a teleport to go right in this little area, Castle Vakmar. This is where the end of the game takes place. So technically, you can go onto this little continent, but only this tiny little area. You also can go into this little area. This is um, brighter, this little brighter green area. Um, more than halfway through the game, you take a teleport from Aeolus here, which takes you into a swampy region of Icronus. It is completely landlocked, because, um, for reasons, there's cliff sides all around, but you can clearly see on the map that there have been trade roads that were intended to travel further along leading into this region. There was a trade road from re leading from here to here. There was the path that's blocked by rocks, but there was a way to jump up onto the rocks and onto the ground on the other side of the rocks. And if you took any more than, like, a handful of steps, you would get a loading screen and it would take you right back inside here. So, the game wouldn't let you leave this area, even though the map clearly showed that you could at one point. Because they showed there there was a road leading out, sprawling through here, leading through here. There were settlements all throughout here. And it led to this little area here, too. There was a big settlement here, there was a settlement here, there's a big settlement here, there's something big here, there's a settlement here... There was a settlement here, and it started to go all the way up into here, into the big area, to the big bad guy area. So it, was, it would start to slowly get bad the further along here you went. But all throughout this mainland area, this was a completely different kingdom. You, the, the, the amounts of things that you could find here, like the architecture in this area, felt more European. Well, the architecture here felt more Asian. The architecture here felt more, like, Egyptian-looking. And then the, there were some elven ruins up in here. And it was fascinating to me, because I liked to get lost in here. I spent ten-plus hours exploring this entire continent, because I thought that there might be a way I could further get further inland to see just what what this entire continent was, because it eluded me, and and when I looked it up later on, that that they used this continent in multiplayer, because there was a multiplayer mode that you could enter, go uh, play with other people, play various different game modes that I talked about earlier, that that used, the, oh crap, that, that used this. Oh, here I can show you this if you want. <laughs> I also found this off the internet. Um, this says fake and never used, so obviously that's true. So, you don't get to go here. This is the second half of the game, and this is just a big desert. There's not too much here, graphics-wise. Um, this half is pretty decent, interesting looking, but this is just empty desert. There's not too much there. And then that's the tutorial island, and then, then this is Alsorna. So, I just kept it over here, just because it's cleaner. But, yeah, that technically showed you stuff. That was a faux pas on my part. <sighs> Even though the quality of this video is crap anyways, you probably didn't see anything. Um, but yeah. That was all. That's it. That was all you could do in that game. And that was disappointing to me. It was beyond disappointing. Because here you have a game with a very 
decent combat system. The combat system was fun. You can you had a button to draw your weapon to attack, then you could sheath your weapon because you've kept your weapon drawn in civilized areas, the people would get mad at you, so you had to sheath your weapon. Um, you could use the magic system, which is very interesting. You could use the typical hierarchy of armor, you got your steel, iron, all the way up to like legendaries and things of that nature. With drops and things of that nature, you, get, you could have a player-owned house where you could store all of your gear, quest-related items. But just that big map, that big Icronus area within, up in the north of the two smaller islands, you couldn't go there. And I thought maybe in the DLC you could. But no. No. You got Nanaria. So, Two Worlds 2 felt unfinished to me. It felt unfinished because there was so much you could have done with that massive continent. The second half of the game, the ending, was so disappointing. I thought, I honestly thought, honest and truly, I thought in this game you had the first portion here the second portion here and then you would have like a massive portion of the game in this massive continent like you would go here then you would come back here you would do a little bit here and then you would come back here and you got to explore this entire area all the way traveling up to the peninsula all the way up to Castle Vagmar but no that's not how it works you did this, you go to the swamp, you go back here, you go to this ruin here, and then you get teleports to the castle, and the game ends. It's just... There was so much that they introduced in this game. There's a lot of stuff here, story-wise, that doesn't get... doesn't go anywhere. Apparently, the DLC is, like, the second half of the game, story-wise. So, like, they knew that the game was unfinished, and they just released DLC five plus years later, going like, oof, oops, we made it, oop, oop. So we're gonna finish the story now. <laughs> oh, and we have a two worlds three now. Uh, oh, it's just <sighs> the story was the gameplay was fun. The story was actually interesting. What little story there was, the map was interesting. This was not as fun. I liked the. Egyptian desert type of architecture here. I liked a lot of the side quests in this area. Like, you can see here that this is highly metropolized. You have the rich people district, you have the poor people district, and you have, like, the middle area district, and you have some small villages located here, here, and here. And then, for the most part, it was just empty desert. There's just empty desert. There was so much you could have put here, but it was just empty. And then over here, um, you had a type of university here. And all of the, most of the NPC models were like Asian style. The architecture was Asian style. It was jungle here and here. And then you led further in here and they said this is where the old city was. Like the older university was. Like this university blew up in this area. And so they remade it here on this side of the island. So, you had lush green landscape here with n interesting, nice looking colors. And it was a night and day compared to the dead area here. And then you go into like this ruined crater with all sorts of weird, mutated creatures in this second half of the island. Which was also very interesting to me. And then the final teleport takes you to the end of the game. It just takes you to the castle. You don't get to explore. You don't get to do anything on this massive continent. Because, maybe, because if you took all of the playable areas, all of the playable areas, and you tried to mush them on, onto this continent, there would still be more of this continent than you have playable area here. I mean, maybe you could count all the beaches here that you could visit, maybe you can, but there's no quests up here, there's no NPCs, not a single soul that you could talk to is on this continent. Not a single soul. Though there's clearly signs of life. There's a village here, completely finished village. Nobody's there. There's ruins, elven ruins here. Nobody's there. 
there's another village here. Nobody's there. Nobody. Except for maybe right here on this northern coast, there is a populated village of fish people. You can't talk to them. They're just hostile. And there's various fish people, and there might be some bears that you could fight and hunt and kill. But for the most part, there is nothing here. And yes, I've spent 10 to 15 minutes talking about that, but I spent 10 to 15 hours exploring it. So I should spend 10 to 15 minutes talking about it. Because it's a massive place and a massive disappointment. Because this was a game that I was massively interested in. I wanted to, to think that this could be the next Skyrim or something. It felt like the next Skyrim to me. They put a lot of effort, they put a lot of time and effort into what you could do here. So many side quests. A lot of it felt like fetch quests, but so did Skyrim's fetch quests. So did Reckoning's fetch quests. But at least there was something to do. You could do things. You could do a lot of things here. You could do nothing here. But they let you... They, they taunted you by having your boat be able to sail all across the coastline of this massive area. But there was nothing here. There was nothing. The ruins interest me, the villages interest me, what the map showed me, because the map, like, um, illuminates itself as you explore the area, so, like, this whole entire continent was, like, illuminating itself as I was exploring along the coastline, and I was able to see roads and all sorts of, like, icons on the map that actually weren't here. You could tell that there was stuff that they planned to do here in the single player, not just the multiplayer. And it just... it just wasn't there. It just wasn't there. And then the DLC comes out five plus years later, on mo probably for the PC. I don't... I doubt it's on the PlayStation 3. Not that I plan to get it. But then the DLC comes out, they continue the story five years later, even though they should have finished it here, in the main game. And it's just... so disappointing. So disappointing, you had an A-list indie title here, even an A-list game here. It was all right here under your fingertips. It wasn't going to be Skyrim, in terms of, like, big company, big marketing, big promoting. It could have rivaled it in terms of what you could do in this game. If only they put the effort into letting you do it. The multiplayer was innovative. The village system was innovative. But like I've said time and time again, especially for console games, your multiplayer is going to die. It is going to die. And when it dies... All that time and effort you put into it might as well have been put into your single player, which won't die, so long as there is one person playing it. This has been the Two Worlds Two audio cast. Signing off. And remember, be more imaginative than these guys. <laughs>